even those who had not fallen into full-blown reversion really did need to hear these things as well. However, both as a validation of their good approach and as a palliative against giving in to the poor approach the majority of the Jerusalem congregation had adopted. The correct approach of the minority in holding fast to grace was good. Had they been working towards correcting the majority who were on the brink of falling away would have been even better, especially if a positive response had been elicited. And that, after all, was the purpose of the letter. Striving for what is better is one of Paul's major themes in Hebrews, moving on from the past to the better future God has planned for us all. And at his session, verse 3, Jesus became manifestly superior to the angels to the degree that he received as a part of his inheritance a name so much more glorious than theirs. Hebrews 1.4 Even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are convinced of better things in your case, the things that have to do with salvation. Hebrews 6, 9 For the law made nothing perfect, and a better hope is introduced by which we draw near to God. Hebrews seven nineteen. Because of this oath, Jesus has become the guarantor of a better covenant. Hebrews seven twenty two. But in fact the ministry Jesus has received is as superior to theirs as the covenant of which he is mediator is superior to the old one, since the new covenant is established on better promises. Hebrews 8, 6 It was necessary, then, for the copies of the heavenly things to be purified with these sacrifices, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Hebrews 9, 23 You suffered along with those in prison, and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property, because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions. Hebrews 10.34 By faith Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith Abel still speaks even though he is dead. Hebrews 11.4 Instead they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one, Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Hebrews 11.16 Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Hebrews 11.35 Since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Hebrews 11.40 to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Hebrews 12.24 Previous labor and love. It is not that I have already gotten what I am striving for, nor that I have already completed my course. Rather, I am continuing to pursue the prize in hopes of fully acquiring it, this prize for whose acquisition I was myself acquired by Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not consider that I have already acquired it. This one thing only do I keep in mind, forgetting what lies behind me on the course and straining towards the course ahead, I continue to drive straight for the tape, towards the prize to which God has called us from the beginning of our race in Christ Jesus. Philippians 3.12-14 through 14. Since then we too, just like the believers of chapter 11, have such a large audience of witnesses surrounding us, men and angels, let us put off every hindrance, especially whatever sins habitually affect us, and run with endurance the race set before us. Hebrews 12.1 In this Christian race we are running without doubt, the best thing is to start early and strong, stay strong and finish strong. Few of us can lay claim to such a track record, however. Paul himself, though one of if not the greatest believers of all time, came late to the race, following a long period of opposing Jesus Christ and requiring a personal intervention from our Saviour himself to turn him around. Nor did he run a perfect race thereafter, albeit one of the best ever run. Many of us took our time after salvation before picking up the pace for our Lord, and few of us have not been tripped up or stumbled once or twice along the way. All such infelicities can at least be mitigated by putting a strong finish to the race. But of all the possibilities in this contest in which we are all engaged, the sorriest and the saddest is to start strong and finish weak, or worst of all, 
not finish at all. But when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and does according to all the abominations that the wicked man does, shall he live. All the righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered, because of the unfaithfulness of which he is guilty, and the sin which he has committed, because of them he shall die. Ezekiel 18.24 The sin unto death, as we have explained many times, is God's terminal divine discipline, leveled against believers who turn away from the truth entirely and begin to behave in a manner so damaging to the name of Jesus Christ that they are taken out of this life prematurely. Apostasy, on the other hand, occurs when believers in decline also turn away from their faith, abandoning it entirely and reverting to being unbelievers. In the former case, the individual remains saved, having held on to his or her faith in spite of dishonoring the Lord. In the latter case, the person becomes no further concern to the Lord, as one who no longer belongs to Him, from their own free will choice. Thus the former circumstance, the sin unto death, may well give the appearance in this life of being worse than the latter, but the latter is certainly worse in the end than the former, regardless of how uncomfortable it may be for any believer standing before the Lord's judgment seat, when we, His Church, receive our final evaluation, that eventuality is infinitely better than being cast into the lake of fire at the last judgment. Since both prospects resulting either from a poor finish or a lack of finishing the Christian race are dismal, Paul's statement about God being just so as not to forget the labor and the love you demonstrated towards his name in having rendered service to your holy brethren and in continuing to do so must be taken to mean at least as long as you do not apostatize. We are assured by our Lord that everything we do or have done for His Church will not fail to receive its due reward. Matthew 10.42 The only way we can entirely lose what has been deposited in our heavenly thesaurus, Matthew 6.19-21, 1 Timothy 6.20 and 2 Timothy 1.14, is through abandoning that faith upon which everything depends, 2 Timothy 2.12 and 13. Watch out for yourselves, lest you lose what you have worked so hard for, but may instead receive a full reward. No one who goes wandering off, that is, from the faith, that is, anyone who does not keep to the teachings about Jesus Christ, has even a share in God, that is, because of apostasy. 2 John 1, 8 and 9 I am coming quickly. Hold on to what you have so that no one takes your crown away. Revelation 3, 11. Certainly Paul is counting on those believers, who are only partially involved in compromise to renounce it entirely, and hoping for those who have stopped running the race completely to recall what they had suffered in the past, along with the genuine good they had done for the Church of Jesus Christ, so as to repent, in order not to lose everything they previously worked so hard for. For all who eventually did heed Paul's rebukes and respond to his encouragement, we say with surety that God will indeed honor his promises to reward their prior godly efforts done for Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit.